Before you understand what ethical hacking is, let's take a moment to understand what hacking is. According to cyber.laws.com, computer hacking refers to the practice of modifying or altering computer software and or its hardware to accomplish a goal that is considered to be outside of the creator's original objective. Basically, if you modify a software program or the hardware of a computer and use it in any way other than it was originally designed for, you're hacking. Of course, not all hacking is bad, and that's where we get into ethical hacking. Ethical hacking is when an expert attempts to hack a computer or a network with the express written permission of the asset's owner. Now when I say asset's owner, it sounds simple, but it could actually be a lot more complicated. For example, if you're asked to hack a website that is on the internet, you would want to get permission from not only the person who manages or administrates the website, but also the website service provider or the web host. So if they're using GoDaddy.com, you'll want to email them, contact them, tell them that you want to run a hack against the site to check its security, and you'll need to get permission from them as well. So you need to think about all parties that are involved with the asset that you're hacking and contact them for permission and get written permission from them before you begin. Now, an ethical hacker attempts to find exploits, vulnerabilities, or uses that a malicious attacker or hacking group could exploit or use to cause harm to the company. This process is referred to as penetration testing, so ethical hackers complete penetration testing. The ethical hackers are paid to find these vulnerabilities first and make the company aware of the risks. The company can then take action to mitigate the risks or they can accept them if the mitigations will interfere with day-to-day -day operations. Now, there are different types of penetration tests that can be completed against a target. For example, a white box penetration test is when ethical hackers have been provided with all available information about the subject they are testing. This information could include network diagrams, software source code, hardware components, or anything else that is related to the target. A black box penetration test is when the hackers have been provided no back-end information about the target. The purpose of this penetration test is to simulate as closely as possible how a malicious attacker might attempt to compromise a target without insider knowledge. While the requirements for different types of penetration tests may change, the one thing that doesn't and the most important thing I want you guys to take away from this lecture is that you need express written consent from all parties involved in this hack. Even if you're performing ethical hacking functions with no ill intent, you can still get into a lot of trouble if you don't have permission in writing. Now it's a good time to start talking about another type of hacker, the gray hat hacker. A gray hat hacker is a unique type of hacker because they are freelancers and operate without written consent. They are known to discover system weaknesses without written permission, but also without malicious intent. Their goal is to bring these flaws to the attention of the system owner so they can be corrected. A lot of times a gray hat hacker is hoping to be compensated for giving the information to the company instead of a malicious hacking group. So even though the end result for the company they're hacking is good, a gray hat hacker is not an ethical hacker. Malicious hackers are called black hat hackers. Their main goal is to do damage and expose or steal data. A black hat hacker may try to steal information such as social security numbers, credit cards, personal identifiable information, bank account information, and much more. Governments also employ the use of black hat hackers to attempt to steal information from other countries or cause political disruptions that may help their local government in one way or another. The black hat hacker is very dangerous and many of these elite hackers band together in groups that are capable of doing enormous amounts of damage, especially when they are backed by government sized budgets. While no network is completely secure, there are steps that can be taken to lessen risks, thus making a network or system less of a target. This is called reducing your attack surface. One way of doing this is by performing penetration testing, and that is what ethical hackers do. Okay, that wraps up this lecture. I hope you found this lecture to be informative. I hope you're a little more educated on what ethical hacking is. Let's keep going on, and I will see you in the next lecture.